Hey, what's up, guys? It is Wednesday, about 5.30, just leaving work. Finished uh, diagnosing a bad inducer draft motor on a 90% Lennox furnace, an OG26. And uh, <clears throat> thought about making a little video about something. Uh, something I know a lot of guys have touched on and sorry for the glare I'm driving right towards the Sun here um, but anyways um, I wanted to talk about when is it okay from a service technician standpoint and or a customer standpoint to replace his or hers HVAC equipment <clears throat> whether it be uh, air conditioning heat pump or gas um, you hear so many things from different technicians different contractors different sales guys usually the sales guys tend to bring the life expectancy of a unit a lot lower than you, what you can really get out of it, in my opinion. Um, I know a lot of guys say that 10 to 15 years is what you're looking at out of a furnace. And 10 to 12 or 10 to 15, depending on the manufacturer, is what you're looking at for an air conditioner. Um, we, I, I feel like there's so, there's so many shaded areas with when is it okay. Um, I, I really do think it depends, in my opinion, it depends on a multitude of things. I think it depends on, number one, when I look at a, at a piece of equipment and I have a costly repair, like in this case, the lady had a 1997 G26 90% furnace. Um, it was in a conditioned basement. It was a two pipe system and upflow. It had a April Air Space Guard 201 filter media and has been maintained by our company for a, a long time, for a number of years. Um, outside of replacing the run capacitor on the blower a few years back, nothing's been done to the unit outside of maintenance. Um, when I look at a piece of equipment, I look at number one, how expensive is the repair going to be to get the system up and running? One. Number two, I look at how old the system is. Um, and compare that to the actual condition of the system. Now obviously, if you have an issue where an inducing motor fails, you can't fire up the system to check it clearly because the inducing motor is not running. But there's certain things you can look at as a technician that will point you towards the right direction. For example, if I look at a piece of equipment like in this case with that G26, I started analyzing and inspecting the burner assembly and the heat exchanger as much as I can. I mean, obviously, I didn't spend the whole day ripping the unit apart, checking each heat exchanger cell, and you know, doing all that. But you, you, you can get a pretty good feel with experience how well that system's been performing as far as combustion-wise. Um, if the burners are rotted out, rusted, um, especially when they start developing, you know, heavy scales on them, um, you can peek into the actual heat exchangers and see how they are. 
I actually pulled the existing uh, inducer draft assembly out of the cold header box and shine my light in there to see if I saw any cracks on the interior of the header box or any heavy rusting um, things like that um, fire up the blower motor see how the blower motor sounds um, if the you know amp out the blower motor you want to eliminate and make sure to the best of your ability that the furnace is in reasonably you know decent condition Obviously, a 19-year-old furnace, is it going to run like a brand-new furnace out of the box? No, but it can be pretty darn close, you know, depending on how well it's been maintained. Um, things like the blower, uh, cleanliness, that's a really big thing for me. You know, to me, when you're putting in a large investment on a repair on a, on a piece of equipment, whether it be air conditioning or a furnace, you know, I, I'm really big on... The filter rack and filtration you know the last thing you want to do is put heavy repairs on a on a piece of equipment and you have a clogged up evaporator coal uh, or you know your blower wheel is full of trash crap in there to me that's something to think about you know can you pull out the blower wheel and give the customer pricing on cleaning it can you do the same thing with the coil you know, give the customer a price on that. Now, you, when you start to add all those things, you know, is it worth doing that compared to replacing the piece of equipment? But if all of those check out fine, like in this case, she had a high efficiency filter. Um, I opened up the blower door. It was pretty much spotless. Squirrel cage was clean, motor was clean burners and the heat exchanger looked in pretty good condition especially the fact it's almost 20 years old uh, the blower motor actually sounded nice and smooth amped out fine um, things like that you know see if there's any especially on a 90 percent if you see if you show signs of any water leaks and rusting inside the cabinet itself things like that you want to look for um but guys i mean what's what's the point of being a service tech if you ain't gonna fix anything you know what i'm saying i mean the whole point is to keep pieces of equipment going for as long as you possibly can you know without spending a ridiculously amount of money more than you would on a replacement at a time you know uh, I mean if 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 um, the heat exchange is rotted you know and it's on its last leg it does it make sense to put throw six seven hundred dollars on a repair on a 20 year old furnace no it doesn't at that point you know I re I always recommend replacing the, the furnace it's just not worth it um, you know if you have horrible filtration you know, air leaks inside the system for all these years and your motor's full of crud or your blower wheel is dirty and you can tell just by opening up the blower door seeing how much what the dust and dirt level is in there you know, those are things to think about because um, a lot of times by the time you price the customer to snatch an evap coil, clean it snatch a blower wheel, replace it or clean it plus the repair, you, you, you're, you're getting pretty close to a whole new furnace um, but some customers want to do that and you know at the end of the day as long as you get in my opinion as long as you honestly give customers your honest professional opinion and give them options see that's the thing a lot of times contractors and technicians they won't give the customer options they'll just say well you have a 20 year old furnace it's going to be you know four to six seven hundred dollars to do repair i recommend you know replacing the equipment you know, let them know how much it'll cost to fix it. Let them know how much it'll cost to replace it. Put the ball on their court. At the end of the day, it's their money, their investment. All you can do is let them know what your um, educated opinion is on the matter and have them make the decision. Don't just tell a customer you have a 20 year old piece of equipment and the repair is going to be over $400 and you don't recommend fixing it you recommend replacement not all the time is that correct and is it right 
you know, give customer as much options as you possibly can, have them make the decision. Um, so yeah, guys, just kind of want to throw a little video on that. Um, in this case, you know, I gave the customer, um, I couldn't get any pricing on the inducer motor because Lennox closed, but I told her I was going to go ahead and, um, call them first thing tomorrow morning when they open up at seven and give her a price to replace the inducer. And I told her, I said, look, I, I, mechanically anything could fail. It can happen on a brand new piece of equipment one year out of the box. I mean, I've had, I had a, a, a Lennox XC25, which is a variable speed condenser. I had the inverter board fail five days after it was initially installed. There's nothing wrong with the installation, nothing wrong with the wiring to cause that. It just went bad. There was some type of brownout or surge or something like that, and there it went. And that, that's a top-of-the-line unit as far as efficiency goes. Five days out. So anything can happen mechanically. I always tell my customers that. I can't guarantee anything. There's no guarantees. But all I can do is tell them what my opinion is on the, on the status of their equipment and leave it at that. I let her know the more or less the price range of the repair. Let her know that her furnace is 19 years old, but I let her know at the same time, hey, your heat exchange is really not in that bad shape. I mean, it had a little bit of rusting, which is normal. I didn't see anything out of, you know, drawing red flags. There was no rust or condensation buildup that would show me there's a heat exchanger leak. Can there still be one? Of course, that's, that's a chance you always take when you repair, especially an older system, but it's been working prior to that so a lot of things to think about um, I just I, I never like those texts that all of a sudden you know the second the units out of the five or ten year warranty and it's a somewhat heavy repair they just default to replacing the equipment I don't think that's right you know and in, in, in every application I, I just don't um, I went to school for HVAC. I wanted to become a service tech, and that's our job to diagnose, troubleshoot, and repair within reason. So, um, anyways, guys, um, just wanted to throw that out there. Just um, decided to make a video on it on the way home have a long ride. I got about an hour and three minutes according to the GPS to get to the crib. So uh, anyways, uh, if you have any comments, drop them below and uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Alrighty guys, see you on the next one.